Okay, we are up at the summit, uh, 14,000 feet, uh, top of Mauna Kea. We are at Canada France Hawaii Telescope. And uh, we've had an instrument failure. I'm a little out of breath, I climbed up here. Okay, you can see right down there, uh, the great big black thing, that is an instrument. You know, weighs like 20,000 pounds, that's weir cam wide field infrared camera behind it back there that is mega cam now we've already taken the whole top section of mega cam off we've taken the actual camera the detector off to get at the jukebox and the jukebox is broke okay you could probably hear the wind it's howling like crazy we're uh we're at about 55 miles an hour uh, or no 55 knots uh, constant over 30 minute average uh, with gusts I think up in the 65 range so we may have to evacuate but hopefully we can get we can get this guy out right here this is the jukebox assembly okay so this is the instrument or the kind of the guts of the instrument the camera would have sat right up here and this plate is covering optics, big, big glass. Now, what we have is this jukebox assembly is filled with eight different filters. And this thing has to go up. And then there's a whole, we've already taken it off, but there's a whole mechanism that pulls the filter into the beam of light, essentially. Now, uh, what happened is we've got jack screw over here and we've got a jack screw on the other side. They're connected down here through these gearboxes with some shafting. That motor drives everything into a right angle gearbox. Basically, this came uncoupled, we think. And what it did was it tweak this whole gearbox and I think I can find a picture of that and I'll put a picture up right here okay yeah so in the next few minutes we hope to uh, be able to get get this entire assembly out of here and uh, you know like I said we're at 14,000 feet and I've got a I've got a light right in my eyes here uh, but uh, it's hard to do work up here and all the fine fine machining tools are down in Waimea at uh, 2,700 foot of elevation. Much easier to think when there's more oxygen. Uh, make the right choices, take your time. It is very cold up here. Uh, we keep this entire dome area. We keep this entire area kind of uh, refrigerated. Uh, so it's quite cold up here. That's why I'm in a hoodie and two or three shirts, a bunch of layers. Uh, anyway, so let's get this thing out and get it down to Waimea and uh, start working on it. All right, we got the jukebox itself out and relocated down to Waimea where it's more comfortable to work than up on the summit. Uh, got that pulled out. We need to check the squareness of this to make sure this isn't permanently tweaked. And then, uh, and then we've got the actual mechanism, the lift mechanism right here. This is where the failure occurred. Uh, motor drives this thing through a T gear box, and this coupler completely failed. We got a helical over here that's off, and this thing spun too. So basically one side got powered and the other side didn't and devastation. So what we're going to do is disassemble all this stuff. We're going to test all these gearboxes. We're going to either replace or refurbish uh, or rebuild uh, new shafts, keys, couplers, uh, just so this can never happen again. We also need to go in and verify that none of this stuff was bent because, you know, that jukebox was twisted in here. It was kind of, that side was down, this side was up. So uh, we got to verify none of this stuff is bent. We also want to service all this, clean it, regrease it. Um, just verify everything's good. <laughs> All right, 
so uh, motor motor comes in uh, has just a compression coupling no keys which is fine if that slips but what we don't want it to do is lose one of these guys and these are not in real nice shape so I think this is going to be our focus you can see that one's been modified and wallered out and not real pretty so what we're going to have to do i believe is take this thing apart and see if we can manufacture a new shaft because finding one of these is probably next to impossible <laughs> Okay, so we got the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the cross shaft out of this uh, right angle gearbox. It's uh, just straight bevels, straight bevel gears. So covered in grease, years and years. This thing's never been apart for 30 years. So uh, we got to get the bearing off. There's a little, little bit of filing that needs to be done over here where this thing got buggered up. We can get the bearing off and then we can clean this guy up really good in the uh, solvent tank and see what we got, see if this uh, gear can come off and then we can remanufacture a new shaft. Okay, we got this right angle gearbox torn down and the shaft looks easy enough to manufacture, eight millimeter. Just got a couple of uh, grooves in it for circlips and some key slots. Problem is we show a pretty good amount of wear on these bevel gears. So, we're either going to see if we can find new bevel gears or a whole new gearbox, which is not going to be easy, I don't think. There are no markings, no numbers. So, uh, yeah. Well, I guess there is a number right there. All right, so my coworker Tom actually disassembled every single part off of the jukebox here, verified that everything was square and straight, flat on the stone. Uh, these guys had a little bit of a bend to them. Uh, they were easy to, uh, to straighten back out. It's just aluminum with a hard anodized coat. Um, if I had to make new, I've got a whole sleeve full of that material. But, uh, but these guys are going to work. It looks like uh, when this thing tweaked, and again, one side went higher than the other, so it went out of, out of square, trapezoidal shape. Uh, what it did was this guy took the brunt, didn't bend it, but what it did was pop the screw head off. So that's good, kind of the fuse, you know. Uh, so everything's back together and square on the jukebox. Now, on the jukebox mechanism that lifts it up and down, um, what we got is these little gearboxes, helical gears go in here, and then this is the entire arrangement of right angle gearbox. So the motor goes here, and uh, these guys spin. And what happened, what caused the failure, is that something came uncoupled between the two in this uh, in this shaft arrangement right here. So what uh, what we're gonna do is got lucky and I found a new gearbox. So that guy's in route right now, two day air. And what we're gonna do is instead of these tiny tiny little tiny round key slots, what we're gonna do is put these in a collet. And we're going to cut a nice toothed pattern in here. And then we'll make, make a piece right here that has the, the, the same, this little stub shaft will have the same male pattern in it with whatever I need on this other end to accommodate a new helical coupling for misalignment. We've got the new gearbox. We'll get this with the right two millimeter square 
key slot in it. And then we're going to have to manufacture something for this side. And we're still thinking about what we're going to do there. Okay, so we're in the office and uh, had to come up with a design now. Um, so basically, this, this right here is what we've got. Uh, this shows the kind of the middle section of, of Mega Cam. This is the Camembert, this is the jukebox assembly, and uh, the jukebox lift. And this is the motor that drives all the stuff that broke. Uh, so if we go open this up, this is the new design. So we've got a right angle gearbox is our T gearbox. This is the motor bracket that supports the T gearbox. And uh, yeah, basically what we're going to do, if we look at this guy right here, we're going to cut that into the existing right angle gearbox coupler. And then we're going to build this piece from from uh, from raw stock out of stainless. So it's not keyed uh, per se in the in the sense of a keyway, but uh, but there's no way any of this stuff will shear off ever, uh, and it doesn't use a key to fail, fall out, whatever else, um, lose upon uh, trying to reassemble this thing. Uh, so that's what we're after there. If we go back, uh, this is a standard almost purchased part with a set screw in it. And we're gonna have to cut a key slot here in this guy. We're gonna buy these guys from McMaster. Buy this from McMaster. This is eight millimeter uh, key stock, or this is, this is eight millimeter uh, shafting, turn ground and polished. Uh, and we're gonna cut key slots in that. We're gonna make keys that fit precisely to the key slot. Uh, so they don't have wiggle room at all. Uh, can't work their way out from underneath. Uh, there will be collars in here that prevent movement of this in if if this were to come loose. Uh, and also on this end, we've got a circlip that will prevent movement as well. Uh, so basically, this thing is for this to loosen up. Let go of the keys where there are keys. Um, you're going to have to break a circlip uh, or. I mean physically shatter something into pieces. So I think this is a pretty good design. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut these gearboxes right away uh, while this other stuff is, is on order. I've got some end mills on order, I've got uh, a brooch set on order to do this two millimeter stuff and uh, then we'll finish up the rest of it. All right you can see on uh, on the master cam here we've got uh, We've got that entire right angle gearbox loaded up. What we're going to do is is uh, is cut this uh, cut this profile out. And here's here's our setup. Uh, just got it stuck in a collet. And I've got a little tiny, if you can see it, I got a little tiny screw, two millimeter screw, uh, taking up the gap there. And then of course through through the side right here. You have access to the set screw that clamps this whole thing. So the reason we're doing this is because way back in the day, somebody did a drill. Uh, probably put an insert in here, eight millimeter rod, flushed, and then uh, drilled right there uh, for a round piece of dowel to act as a key. We're not real comfortable with that, so what we're going to do is. Uh, is cut this little pattern in right there and I can zoom in on that it's really really going to be simple you can see it right there it's going to be really really simple just probably going to do some sort of a contour uh, with uh, maybe a ramp just ramp this down in because you know we've already got we've already got a bore all we're doing is just taking the edges in in that uh, four leaf clover pattern Okay, so I got this guy swept in. It's within about a half bow. Should be just fine for what we're doing here. Now what we'll do is go ahead and get some programming done. Okay, so we were a little afraid to take this thing apart uh, for fear of 
preload on the bearing, setting up the depth of this whole thing. Uh, so we just want to leave this together. But what I need to do is perhaps maybe I've got uh, I've got some uh, some Kim wipes, and I think what we're going to do is just sort of uh, fill the gap. Let's see if this works okay. All right, so we'll just uh, slowly feed this guy in and, uh, and see how we do. We're, we're hoping we don't get a lot of chatter in there. So anyway, we'll see. Tools right up there. It's a quarter inch three flute solid carbide. Uh, I believe it is also a helical. I use a lot of helical tools. Uh, so yeah, let's see what she does. We got the two uh, ends of the right angle gearbox is done and the next part is this guy. So this will be the interface to the right angle gearboxes. So uh, grabbed uh, I don't know six inches of uh, some stainless here. I believe it's 304 and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, kind of turn this profile. Then what we'll be able to do is put this in a in a lathe chuck, and then uh, do this end work so that it fits right in there. Nice, nice tight fit. Uh, and then uh, I can put this in a collet and do this end with the uh, with the teeth. Once I get the spider in, uh, and I'll know that uh, that's actually going to fit and work well. So anyway, uh, let's get this going. Okay, so uh, we've got them done. Uh, these are the blanks, essentially, for this part right here. And these will have this four-leaf clover pattern cut into the end. And these will just slip into this. All right, here's the next step. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a ramp contour around the end there. You can see the blue lines. That's the tool path. And basically, here's the uh, here's the little blank I made. So we're going to cut halfway down, about 10 millimeters down. We're going to cut that little clover leaf profile in there. And here's the setup. Okay, so we're just about done with our ramp.
All right, guys, literally what I did here, uh, I tried to buy some existing, you know, uh, uh, shaft couplings uh, for, for misalignment to deal with that and also to give some vibration dampening. But I called Motion Industries, uh, one of the dealers in Southern California, since there are no dealers in Hawaii, and uh, explained to them everything I was looking for, gave them models, everything. It's pretty simple. And, uh, yeah, I never heard back from them. So what we did was I downloaded basically a SolidWorks model for this particular, uh, this particular setup right here and uh, built my own. Uh, you can see right here we used the existing SolidWorks data and then on the end I just built my my own little uh, cloverleaf interface and uh, we machined these guys out and uh, this is what we ended up with ordered ordered the uh, the little uh, polyurethane spider and boy that thing fits nice fits right in there so if we of course the other side is gonna have uh, it won't look like this uh, the other side is gonna have a hole for the bore eight millimeter uh, it's gonna have a key and a set screw in it but uh, but it'll have this interface in it and oh, those things go together so nice Uh, this thing right here is going to plug into the first thing we machined right here. So that goes right there. And a set screw will lock that in so that nothing can, uh, nothing can get in the way. Nothing can fail. Nothing can fall out. Nothing can shear off. That's a lot of mass that would have to be sheared off for that guy to slip in there. So, yeah. That's where we're at. And just just goes to show you that uh, you know with a CNC machine I mean you're not restricted to buying things I, it would have saved me some time to be able to buy this thing just machine this feed it in there and uh, and TIG weld it on that's really what all I wanted to do is save me from cutting all this because uh, this is time dependent I have to have this thing back together by Tuesday uh, up at the summit ready to bolt in the instrument so uh, t right now, today is, uh, where, what are we, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, late Wednesday afternoon, I've got, uh, these two pieces done. So i got to finish the other two pieces and, uh, make the shafts, fit everything, get it reassembled, and get it to the summit by Tuesday. So we'll see how we do. Here's our T-gear box. Uh, the only thing I could find on this guy was this hand etched part number right here and the teeth were knife edged bearings felt okay this thing was a little notchy because these teeth are shot okay so <clears throat> we were able to find a brand new one on drives what a great company to deal with. They had uh, tons of these things in stock. 400 bucks. Took just a few days to get here. Um, this guy is smooth, smooth, smooth. All right, so we disassembled our, our uh, right angle gearboxes and uh, went ahead and machined for that guy to fit in there. Made a whole new coupler. Went ahead and <laughs> we don't need Motion Industries apparently. Um, got those guys built up. Now we're going to do the the uh, the other side with a bore. Uh, we we got our uh, we got our brooch from McMaster and we got some. Oh, this is uh, where are we at. This is forty one forty keys keys uh, keystock. Sorry. 4140 key stock. Only going to need a little bit, but I, I bought a few chunks of it. It's really cheap. We got our clip retainers for 8mm shaft. We're still waiting on the shaft. Um, and we got some grease. Uh, when these guys go back together, they're going to need grease. And we have to use very low temp grease. <laughs> this little tube right here. Is about a hundred bucks. 
And we've got a few tubes. We bought everything they got. So there we go. Uh, that's where we're sitting right now. It's Wednesday afternoon, very late, toward the end of the day. Uh, we're going to try and make the mating side of this on Thursday and hope that our McMaster order comes in. Alright, so here you can see the uh, the mating part to what we just made. This guy's going to have a hole and a keyway through it and uh, made some blanks. Uh, I think I got a bar of, I don't know what it is, inch and a half maybe, uh, 304 stainless. And uh, these guys have got to be something like uh, 20, 22 millimeters thick and uh, 30... I think 32. I'm a tad bit under there, but you know what? That's going to be just fine. Now we just got to punch a hole in it and uh, get the keyway in there. So that'll be the next process. Okay, so we got her in a chuck in the bridge port. And uh, I do a lot of sweeping. So that guy's right on the money. So yeah, we're ready to drill some holes. Okay, the first uh, first drill we're gonna do is a little pilot. I think this is a 6.7 mil drill. That was the slow one. Now this is a 7.7. .7. So we got to 7.7. Seven. Now what we're going to do is send this is an 8 press fit. So just slightly under 8. This is going to go real slow. And we'll put a little lube on there. And the goal is in and out. Get it done. Just like that. Okay, that'll be press fit to right on eight. This is an eight millimeter piece of TGMP. kind of starts but it it's real tight so then what we do is we come in with an eight slip fit so this is just a hair over eight and 
We'll send that guy the same way, in and out, quickly. Take our TGMP, turn ground and polished. That's a good fit. Exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now what we got to do is take uh, take this little blank and we got to put a key slot in it. Don't know if everybody's seen that before or not, but this is what we use. It's called a brooch. This is a keyway brooch, uh, two millimeter. And this little collar right here is for an eight millimeter, eight millimeter hole. So uh, what we do, collar goes in, nice fit in the hole. Okay. I like to use uh, a lot of lube on this. What happens is, this will start in the hole, no problem. But then the teeth get bigger and bigger and bigger until they get to the uh, to the perfect depth. And all we do is take our uh, take our Dake Arbor Press and push this guy through. It's only a two millimeter key slot, but it takes a fair amount of work to get that guy cut. Stainless is ugly too. Once you get that last tooth, you're home free. It just gets easy. And then that guy will just drop right through. Pick it up and there's your brooch. And kind of the cool thing is when you look at these brooches after you've done, done the cutting. Um, let's see if we can focus. See that? Look at that. Pretty cool. Got all those little curly cues in there. Each tooth progressively does a little more. A little more and a little more. Okay. And there we go. And uh, I got a little test piece right here. This is uh, off that T gear box. It's got a little two millimeter key in it. So we can uh, just kind of pass this in and check for our. Uh, Check for our fit, and look at that, nice and tight. It's exactly what I wanted, nice and tight. <sighs> yes. Okay. Now what we have to do is put this in the uh, CNC and uh, cut, the, uh, cut the pattern. And then the last thing we'll do is flip it around and drill for the set screw. Alright, we got that guy mounted in a fixture and uh, indicated in, swept the diameter, and uh, we're running the exact same program that we ran in the other part. So now we got uh, both both holes taken care of. We've got all the features uh, milled in the, the opposite side here for the spider. Uh, I've got this clamped in uh, with the key at the very top, purely by eyeball. 
I'm hoping I'm pretty close. I, I should be within a degree or two. And what we're going to do is uh, edge find this piece of TGMP, turn ground polish stock. Uh, we will find the center of that then using, you know, X travel, half of that, right? Um, and then we're going to verify that I'm going to hit the key slot, obviously, make an adjustment if we have to. But uh, we're going to go ahead and drill counter bore with this and run a tap. So three, it's a two millimeter key, but we're going to run a three millimeter tap. I just like the, the size. It's a bit more durable. Uh, it will lock this key down just fine and uh, do exactly what we need to do. <laughs> Okay, you can see I just ran the tap in uh, really shallow, just a few threads. I don't want to risk breaking this tap in this part. We just don't have the time to start making another one. So we threaded in the few, few turns we got done there, and we're going to do it by hand. Nice, nice sharp tap. And that's what you want with stainless. You want something that's really, really sharp. Fair amount of pressure and low speeds. You don't want to work hard in that stuff. You know, when you're drilling holes or milling slots or whatever it may be. Kind of a deep hole. We're through already. There you go. Counterboard four millimeters deep from the surface and then threaded the rest of the way. Now we got to go in and we got to clean this all back up again, probably with a stone. I have some real small stones I can use to work that and even some really small files. So a lot of hand work. Uh, set another one up and, and drill and tap it and then more hand work again. So. Okay, we're all done with the shaft couplers. The next thing we got to do is uh, is make a shaft. Um, I got in just now. I got in my uh, my little uh, solid coupler. Uh, it's a three piece split, so uh, you'll see how it all goes together in the end um, with a key. Very nice. Uh, and I also got in the shaft. So I bought a couple of chunks of uh, TGMP. This is turned, ground, and polished. Uh, very tight tolerance, um, and and of course, you know, uh, it's made in the USA. Uh, unfortunately, it does cause cancer. <laughs> is anybody else tired of California? I've got it indicated. Touched off on the backside, the fixed jaw and uh, came in four millimeters for this eight millimeter TGMP shaft. This end mill right here is two millimeters. That's my keyway size. And that would be an ultra tool from uh, McMaster car. Two millimeter, three flute. So yeah, now we just go to our number, which in this case, 181 and run it out to 9.6 and the depth is 0.91 millimeters
project is essentially done. All we have to do is uh, finish assembly. And that's kind of boring. I won't put you through that. But uh, here's what we did. You know, we, uh, we machined the right angle gearbox uh, motor adapter for this, I don't know what you call it, this uh, four leaf clover kind of thing. Oddly enough, I did this years ago on a Hobart uh, meat grinder, a uh, kitchen meat grinder, big one. Uh, did the same thing, repaired it with weld and ground this, or rather CNC'd this, this uh, pattern in there. And I see that nowadays, uh, you know, I'm a hot rodder to the, to the core, and I see that uh, Motion Raceworks, their new uh, their quick release steering wheel adapter thing has uh, got this same sort of deal on it. So pretty cool. Anyways, uh, similarities between astronomy and uh, race cars. I love it. Uh, so then we, we did this, uh, this coupling, purchased the spider, uh, this guy's uh, set screw and keyed. Uh, we made custom keys uh, in all positions uh, so that uh, they won't move around and wear the slot out. They're tailor fit and uh, hand filed to fit basically. Uh, we got the external retaining rings. We got this, uh, this little eight millimeter coupler, goes right there. And then uh, this guy plugs in to there. We made a custom shaft, uh, another set of these, and cut that guy. So there you go. I mean, that's what it takes to, uh, to keep this uh, facility going. Um, you know, I, basically you take our budget, our annual operating budget, and you divide, divide it into uh, 365. Uh, of course, we have nights for weather that we don't we don't observe, which will drive the value of each night we do up 20, 25,000 bucks a night every night we miss. Now there are other instruments we can put on, but uh, this is how important this stuff is. Um, just uh, just to put it all in perspective, why we're trying so hard. This was uh, we took this off on uh, Thursday on. Friday, we were I worked on uh, on design, uh, came up with a design. Monday, we had a design review, uh, which all the engineers sat in on, gave it the blessing. Uh, the next day, very next day, Tuesday, we ordered stuff from McMaster Car. It's absolutely the fastest way to get things here in Hawaii, and uh, started cutting. And uh, here it is. It's uh, Thursday afternoon, about ready to go home. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing assembly. So basically, one week. Uh, to design and manufacture a hopefully a solution that will never fail again in the future. This instrument was designed in 88. I'm not sure when it was, uh, uh, when it saw its first light, uh, but um, it was kind of designed for like a five year lifespan, maybe 10. And uh, we're working significantly longer than that. Every one of our instruments is a prototype that uh, usually ends up uh, becoming the actual piece, you know? Um, so we just got to keep the stuff going. So anyways, I hope you found that enjoyable. Uh, more content coming, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.